Okay, uh, good afternoon. A uh, couple roster uh, moves today. Uh, we signed O-lineman Michael Schofield back to the active roster. Uh, we placed Alex Leatherwood on NFI, uh, minimum of four weeks, and that's for illness. And we feel great about you know where he is and and uh, and him coming back. Um, so that's the roster moves. And then the honorary captain this week is uh, 62, Lucas Patrick. And uh, the injury report itself will be out uh, after practice today. So we started the the uh, the day. Uh, obviously, yesterday we game planned all day, got the guys in today, and uh, we just started our process of getting prepared for the game. Um, you know, as we know, today's first and second down, you know, go through all the protections and all the defensive calls. And um, and practice today, and I told the guys this morning, is so important because uh, you can't, uh, you know, or I should say it this way, you, it, to order to play hard, you got to live hard. So, and that means that our practice has got to be intense. It's got to be physical. Um, it's got to be the guys themselves have to push themselves uh, so we keep, uh, you know, things sharp and we get better and we get better. The individual period is going to be, have to be on point with the, with the coaches that I said earlier. And that's a big, it's a big, big day for us. And we got to get, uh, we have to get better today. So that's, uh, that's really the focus we have today. So I'll open the questions from there. Can you, uh Provide some more information on Leatherwood. Are we non-football injury, non-football illness? I would say non-football illness. Yeah. And he's down a minimum of four weeks. Yep. yep. That's what I can give you right now, Brad. Is he in the building? Uh, no. Matt, the, the, the Vikings did a good job of disrupting Rodgers and that offense on Sunday. I'm curious what you saw in their performance that 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 you can take away and at least start to, to build your own game plan with. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the, the Vikings play a little bit different style uh, of defense. You know, they're in that different uh, family tree. Uh, so, it's you know, you can't really look at it uh, too much that way. But obviously they had pressure up front. You know, they did a nice job with that. Big Z had some good pressures and uh, did some good uh, things disguised in their coverage, I thought. But uh, and they played hard. Um, was Lucas, Pat Lucas Patrick at guard was exclusively because of his hand, right? Because of the hand injury? Yeah. Rather than so how long are you guys expecting that him playing center is just not an option? How long do you think that will be? Uh, well, we don't know if we know that yet. We don't know that right now. So we're looking at everything this week. Uh, he's getting his strength back in his hand, and we'll see where it goes from there. Luce, what's the depth of preparation that goes into preparing for Aaron Rodgers? How far back do you go to look at what he's done and accomplished? I mean, back-to-back -back MVP seasons. You saw him two, a couple years ago in Indy, right, yep. and beat him. How far back do you go and, and then bring it to the week of the game? Yeah, I think you take it all information. You know, you really do. You look at, you look at uh, you know, because things change. You know, he's been around, you know, and had success for a long time. And he's done it with different pieces, you know, different guys in front of him, different skill sets uh, around him. So I think you have to look at that because he, he's always going to be the same in terms of his accuracy, you know, balls out quick, vision of the field. Um, so you have to look at those things as well, who he's paired with. So I think that's an important piece to it. I, I forget the stat, but I think it was something like three of the 12 quarterbacks that didn't play in the preseason lost this week. And it, do you see what Justin did even in a downpour as validation of the way you handled preseason game snaps? Um, I would say that, uh, you know, I think I said it before, that your team's different every year, and you, you have to look at it that way. Um, we felt that our team obviously is a young football team right now, and uh, you know we had to play those snaps. And we had a short week where we were unable to play in that second preseason game uh, as many reps as we wanted to, but we got a good good amount in that third game. So I think that was helpful, um, you know. And then the game, you know, leading up to it, you get that big break now. You get that transition week where you're you know finalizing your roster. I think those practices there were really good for us. You know, we really had some good physical practices there. And then we came into the game week, uh, the Wednesday week from we go from today and had a good practice. So, but really what matters is today. So. Matt, how did you view that? The game that Stacy brought up back in 2020 when you guys played the Packers in Indianapolis, how did you view that defensive performance against Rodgers where I don't know how much of it you remember specifically, but you guys pretty much shut him out after halftime. Yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, every game's different. You know, every game's different. We had different skill set than we have here. He had different skill sets uh, that he was working with. Um, 
you know, I think we hung in there um, at the end of the day, and we, we came up with the win at the, at the, at the end of it. But uh, it, was a, it was a very competitive game. He had big numbers in that game. I mean, you guys had given up 31 points, which normally a, a defense wouldn't be happy about. But did you feel at the time like, hey, that's, that's reasonably good against a quarterback of his stature? Um, I, I don't know if I really look at it that way. Uh, Jay, I don't know if it's like, uh, you know, good or bad. You know, if you come out with a W, it's a W. That's the way we look at it. Man, what did you see defensively that you did against the 49ers that you think will most be most consistently effective this season regardless of the opponent? Uh, I just think we play with good effort. Um, it's not good enough. Uh, we have to improve that. Um, you know, the, the instantaneous reactions need to be better. Uh, we are a little bit uh, tape delayed at times, uh, but we need to improve that. So we will uh, – that's this reading your keys and being faster to the punch. Um, but uh, I thought for the first part of it, the first game, I thought guys played uh, relatively well. How do you instill that need to improve after a win? Isn't there kind of sometimes a human nature element that guys just think, well, we won, so that's all that matters? That's what they say sometimes. Yeah. But you said, yeah, obviously you want to get better. How do you, how do you, how do you enforce that, kind of like the hits thing? How do, how do you instill that in, in, in your play? Well, I think it's education. We, you know, we talk to our players about the whole post-performance. And to me, it's like it doesn't matter. If it, whatever the score is, the score is. You know, so it doesn't matter. So now what can you learn from the performance? So you're there in that moment now. The game's over here. You're on to the next day. What do I take from that? You know, there's good and bad in every, every football game as a unit, as a football team, and as an individual. So how can I take the stuff that I need to improve on and go to the next week to get better for my next performance? And that's what uh, we tell our guys. And you got to put it in that box. You have to put it in that. Because if you don't, then you're sitting there dwelling on the negative all the time. It's really not negative. It's just somehow I improve. I improve on this skill set. And that's what we're going to do today in individual. Matt, when you're able to get pressure on a quarterback without blitzing, what does that say about your, like, to you about your pass? Well, it's, it's, uh, that to me is it's really good because you have now seven guys in coverage and you're able to fill windows. And that's really good against a, a good quarterback. You know, if you play a guy who's got a little bit more, uh, you know, inexperience, you can get away with sending, you know, five or more. Um, after them and open up those windows, and, and that will affect them because they'll look down at the rush a lot of times. Uh, but when you have a guy with experience, you know you really want to be able to do that most of the time, have seven guys in coverage, rush with four. Um, and that's how we operate most of the time anyway. But, uh, uh, yeah, so that's what I would say. How much does Luke get his... Go ahead. Going back to, Sorry. Going back to Mark's question for a second. You guys are, it's interesting that you guys are okay with handing out, like, not only players in the game, but, like, you know, the Wolves. Yeah, that's that's uh, it's all in the setup because it's, it's not criticizing. You're not criticizing. You're helping the player. You're going to help him to perform better. So in the whole onset of this is a partnership. You know, so it's not like, you know, I'm saying, hey, you know, that's terrible. You know, you loafed. I can't believe, you know, all those things. It's more of a partnership. Hey, how, how can we do this better? Okay. And it's really about us winning the down. And, uh, and it'll help us win the down. So he understands that. The player understands that. And it's just a partnership. And it's not, you're not calling out to criticize. You're calling out to improve. And it's a mindset by the coach and the player. Yeah, I, was curious, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was curious about uh, coaching preparation. Coach Getzi obviously worked with Green Bay last year. How much do you rely on that in your preparation for the game plan? Is familiarity with Aaron Rodgers and their and their offense? Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's certainly helpful. You know, to have a guy that was in the building. You know, it's a helpful to us. Um, you know, we'll lean on him. Uh, we have a couple guys on our staff. You know, so it's uh, it's important for only personnel, but also scheme. So we'll we'll lean on those guys. What's the biggest thing about Justin's performance? in a downpour that you can grab onto and say this can travel to next week and the week after that. Yeah, I would say mental toughness, you know, mental toughness. He, he was able to uh, move all those things aside, you know, figuring out how he was going to grip the ball better, how he was going to operate, and, and then figure out the game as the game went on and, uh, and move the ball down the field. And that's what, to me, is, is outstanding. What an outstanding thing for a young quarterback to have that mental toughness, all those things going on, and be able to laser like focus in and get the job done. So, to me, that was very impressive. So that not a lot of quarterbacks can steady themselves after a first half with that had really no production, and not only steady themselves but steady the group. I'm just 
curious your, your feedback on what you saw from Justin and his ability to, to put that half behind him pretty quickly. Yeah, I think it's just cycle of the snap. You know, we, we, we talk about that, and that's an important piece for him and for every player on our team. So we just, you just turn the page. You only play one play at a time, and you can't play them all at once. And there's going to be six or seven plays that come in the game that make a difference, and we don't know when those are. And so that's why you have to be focused in every single play. And I think he just was – that was in his mind, and that's what he, what he did the whole game. Matt, but, but, of the possibility that you all may have to win ugly throughout the season. How does that impact your game management in the game? And then what does it mean to you that your players have shown you that they can do that for four quarters, they can stay in it for four quarters and pull it out in the end? Yeah, I mean, I just think that, you know, uh, you take one game at a time, you know, and you got to micro it down. And, uh, you know, however you get it done, you get it done. And uh, it's about being resilient as, as, a, as a group um, and knowing that we have each other's back. And I think that's an important part to it. Um, and we're a football team. You know, we're not just individuals. Um, we're not just individual units. You know, we're not offense, defense, kicking. We're the Chicago Bears. And I think that's the, a mindset that there's going to be times where somebody has a, one unit has a hard day or a hard half or a hard quarter or whatever that might be. And that's okay. We all understand that. It's going to happen to the other unit sometime too. Um, so we got to do it together. Man, yeah, you when you were, were, you, guys were focused, you guys are mostly focused on yourselves, but in terms of Green Bay coming off a loss, you know, Rodgers not playing the game that he's accustomed to playing, is that something you coach to your team, mention to your team, like we're probably going to get even more from them than... than yeah, I don't, I don't even go in that direction. I just stay focused on us. When you were interviewed for this job in January and you met with the McCaskey family, did, did the Packers come up? Did, did you get a sense of what this rivalry means to them? It did not. It did not come up during the interview. The Packers have Last two one. talented running backs in Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon with two very different skill sets. What are the challenges in preparing your defense for both of those guys? Yeah, those guys are good players. I mean, they really are. They both have great contact balance. They both have great cut ability. They have vision. Uh, they both are have shown, uh, you know, as of late to be great receivers out of the backfield, catching the ball out of the backfield. And they, they had, what, 11 targets last week? Um, so, and they were talking about up in those targets. So, um, those guys are, are dynamic players, and it's a one-two punch, you know, because they got both have different varying skill sets.